Hi, I'm Arif Modi, and I'm an Alexa skill developer. So far, I've developed three skills, Kids Advice, Meal Buddy, and Wheel of Fun. In my recent video, I talked about how Alexa works. You can find the link to that video in the description below. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to add localization to your Alexa skill. Localization is important because the more countries you include, the more people will see your skill. The more people will see your skill, the more people will use it. It's simple math. In order to keep our code maintainable and at the same time using localization, we should keep our content separate from our code. I might keep my room messy, but I like to keep my code neat. And this approach helps with that. And before I go into the code, I wanna give 100% of everything I know to Andrea Matoni and his amazing blog post and it makes all of the complicated parts seem a lot easier, and I'll be adding a link to that blog post in the description. Now let's dive into the code. So if you're creating your skill using a serverless repository, I would suggest that you use the how-to skill template because they already have the two modules we need included. But if you're creating your skill from the Ask CLI, then you can just install them as you would any other module using the node package manager. So I already have these node modules included in mine. They're i18 next and i18 next sprint f post processor. And then you would just add them in here. So your folder structure should look something like this. You have your lambda function and in it, you have an i18n folder, which, fun fact, i18n stands for internationalization, and it's called i18n because there's 18 letters between the i and the n, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, you should have an i18n folder, which contains all of your content, like I have a en.js, en-gb, and de.js. And then you should have all of your other logic outside. So how should you name your files? You should name them after the locale. Like I have en.js, de.js, these are all after the locale. But this en.js file, this file covers all English speaking countries. So if someone in India plays this skill, then everything they get will come from here. But if you want to add something special for a certain country like I have, um, then you can add a separate file for that. For example, in my en.js file, my stop message is goodbye. So all English speaking countries will get goodbye, except for Great Britain. Great Britain will get toodaloo because that's the special stop message that they have. Same with the welcome message. Instead of getting instead of getting I will spin the British wheel uh, instead of getting I will spin the wheel of fun for you, you get I shall spin the British wheel of fun for you because that's how it is in Britain. And so basically en gb just overrides the en file. Now let's go back into the code. So under these two modules, you just need to include the content file for each locale, like I've done using language strings. And then at the very bottom of your code, well, at least I like to put it at the very bottom because that keeps it organized. And um, you have this big chunk of code, localization interceptor. It might seem really confusing, but it's not. All it does is it parses the incoming request and it chooses the correct language strings based on the user's locale. And here, is where you can set your default language so that if you don't have a special file for the 
language, then the fallback is just en for me. But you can change it to a different language if you want. And so then just copy in this big chunk of code. And then, finally, you need to add that localization interceptor with this line here. And then that's pretty much the hard part. There's not much left. Now all you need to do is use localization. So I'm going to go back to the very top right here. So in my get item intent handler, I'm using a message from en.js. I'm using welcome message, which for en is I will spin the wheel of fun for you. But I can't just write I will spin the wheel of fun for you here. Because if someone in Japan is playing my skill and they don't know English, they'll be like, what is Alexa saying? So instead, you use this command, request attributes.t, and then inside it, put the key for in your code, like welcome message. And the T stands for translate. It's one of request attributes' functions. And what it will do is it um it translates your it translates your message based on the user's locale. And also the nice thing about it is that let's say you have an array here, like I have this fortunes array. If you just put in fortunes, it will automatically choose a random element of the array. So that makes it a lot easier to take something to take a random element. And so yeah, so you just need to add this request attributes.t wherever you're having a string, wherever you have a string. And also wherever you have a string, you need to add this line request attributes and it gets the request attributes and yeah, th so they both go along hand in hand. So so yeah, I hope you now understand how to add localization to your Alexa skill. I hope you now understand how to implement localization in your Alexa skill. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section below. And I've uploaded my Wheel of Fun code with localization to GitHub. The link is in the description below. And I hope to see you in the next video.